if we're all unique, right? We have different character. We have different strengths, different weaknesses, different talents, different personalities, and frankly, different behavioral histories, right? We have different histories in terms of the things we've done throughout our lives. Some of us have done lots of really good things. Some of us may have done, you know, some less good things. So what is what is it? What is that? You know, the, this this common factor that makes that's that's valuable and that's so valuable that makes the creator want to count how many of us there are and it's exactly identical in terms of its value across each of us and this characteristic that makes us valuable makes every single one of us equally valuable right so if we want to know how valuable each of us truly is Right, and the best source to go to for that answer is the creator. We already have the answer that each of us is equally valuable, but why? If each of us is unique, and the fact is that, yeah, some of us are more talented and capable than others. And some of us do use our talents and, and abilities more than others. And some of us do achieve more. And some of us work harder. And some of us are, you know, maybe nicer than others. And some of us work harder than others. So how does it make sense that every single one of us is equally valuable? Like, it sounds nice, right? It sounds nice to say we're all equally valuable. But, but how does that work? Because if we look at all the things that make us who we are, it doesn't look like that's the case. So how is it the case? What is it that, as far as God is concerned, is valuable and makes us valuable and makes each of us equally as valuable as each other? And the answer to that is, it's not our gifts or our talents. It's not even our behavior. It's not how we behave. It's not what we do. It's not how nice we are. It's who we are. It's who we are that makes us valuable to the creator. Now, we, we you know, we need to break that down a little also because who we are, well, what does that mean who we are? Each of us is dif different, right? And who we are is to a degree made up of how capable we are, how gifted we are, how we behave, our disposition, our manners, our, you know, our personality. All of those things are part of who, what make us who we are. But ultimately, right, we just talked about, look at the words I just used. Our personality, my personality, your personality, my characteristics, your talents, my weaknesses, your gifts. They're mine, they're yours, they're ours. They belong to me, they belong to you, they belong to us. They're not who we are. Who we are is the entity, the, the thing, the person, whatever it is, that those talents and gifts and strengths and weaknesses and belong to and that those behaviors are attributed to. So who are we? And if we dig deep all the way down, you know, to, to the deepest layer of that, to the ultimate deepest answer to that question, who we are is a, a piece of divinity, a piece of God. Every single one of us is innately divine deep down inside. Every single one of us is the, hand, the handiwork of the creator. Crafted by hand, by God, so to speak, as if God had, had hands, right? And what we made out of is divinity deep down and then there are layers and layers and layers on top of that and then each one of us has different characteristics etc that are layered on top of that divinity but deep down inside who we all are is divinity so yes the specifics of of who we are as a person effectively are very very different right some of us are more effective than others. Some of us are more gifted, more talented, more capable, less capable, less gifted. You know, better behaved, worse behaved, more nice, less nice, harder working, you know, more resilient, less resilient. There's so much variation across people, right? The seven and a half billion people-ish, whatever the number is now, every single one is unique and different. But those things that make us unique and different are not what, they're not who we are. They're the characteristics with which we interact and present to the world. But they're not who we are. Who we are behind all those characteristics is an instance of divinity.
a spark of God, a spark of the Creator. And when we look at that, when we look at who we are, not what are our characteristics, what are the characteristics that are layered on top of who we are, but who we are, every single one of us is identical at that level, at the level of who we are. And every single one of us is going to be exactly equally valuable. Right? None of us has more or less of an intrinsic connection to divinity than the other. None of us has more or less right to participate in the world, to do our bit to uplift the world and to integrate divinity into the world and to express that inner divinity that we have through our actions and behavior into the world and to uplift it. We all identically equal as far as all these things are concerned because we all have the same divinity inside of us. And that is the thing that ultimately makes us as valuable as we are. Because that's more valuable than any gift. It's more t- valuable than any talent. Divinity is more valuable than any behavior. So as gifted and as talented, etc., as a person is and as resilient and nice and everything else, the value of the divinity we have deep down inside that is who we are is invaluable relative to all of those things combined. It's far more valuable. And so when the creator is evaluating us or when the creator is, you know, thinking or considering how valuable we are, the answer is, yeah, every single one of us is going to be identically valuable. No one is any more valuable. No one is any less valuable. So when we were counted, right, it's not like baseball cards or coins or watches or cars where you've got to count how many of each different variety you have because different varieties are worth different amounts. There's no such thing as different varieties of divinity, different varieties of the creator. God forbid there's one creator, there's one divinity. And every single one of us has an instance of that divinity inside. So every sing- And if that's the most valuable thing about us that eclipses everything else about us in terms of value, then every single one of us is going to be equally valuable. And when God counts how many of us there are, he's going to count every single one of us equally. Every person is going to be the same equal one unit in this count, regardless of gifts and regardless of talents and regardless of history and regardless of behavior and strengths and weaknesses and everything else. Now, this has a lot to do with, you know, with this week's Torah portion and with its relationship to Shavuos, which is coming up. So Shavuos is coming up, you know, this coming Monday. And what happened on Shavuos, right? On Shavuos, we celebrate, we commemorate the event at Mount Sinai, at Har Sinai, when God gave us the Torah. Now, there are probably, I would say, two big things about the Torah and about our relationship with Torah and about what happened when God gave us the Torah. One of those things is our relationship with God, right? Every single one of us is divine deep, deep down. But Torah is also divine. The information is divine. The The guidelines, the instructions, the commandments are divine. So when God gave us the Torah on Mount Sinai, he was giving us a whole new way, a whole new means of connecting our inner divinity to the absolute infinity of God, of the creator. So one of the things that happened on Shavuos is we got a new pathway, a new way in which we can connect our own natural innate divinity to the absolute infinity of the creator. And the second thing we got in Torah was guidelines, mitzvahs, commandments, by means of which we can uplift the world, integrate divinity into the world, into physical reality, right? Every time we follow the guidelines of the Torah, every time we interact with the world, in a way that, you know, that Torah tells us to every mitzvah we do, every act of kindness we do, every word of Torah that we study. Every time we do any of those things, we are integrating divinity into the world. And so these are the two big things that Torah has given us, you know, gave us. The two big things that changed on Mount Sinai is our ability or opportunity to connect to the absolute, you know, infinity and divinity of the Creator. And number two, our ability and opportunity to integrate God, to integrate infinity 
to integrate divinity into the world through our actions and through the way we behave and live our lives. If you haven't yet, click on the subscribe button, then click on the notification bell to see future videos. And please again, share the link wherever you share things on social media, Facebook, wherever it is, WhatsApp groups, WhatsApp status, to help this message reach more people. This has been the Bites of Judaism podcast. This podcast has been made possible by Mr. and Mrs. David and Marquis Smetana. If you found it valuable, please leave a five-star rating and a review. It really does help it reach more people. And tell your friends about it. If you haven't yet, you can subscribe on all the major podcast platforms at rabbiglick.link slash podcast. To dedicate a future episode of the podcast, send an email to podcast at rabbiglick.com. See you next time.